Our next presenter, Cadet 4th Class Howlett Coet, 36 Squadron. Howlett comes from Texas, attended Greystone Prep School last year, also entered with the Class of 2017. His family is also with us this evening. Father, Colonel, retired, Don Kohick, and Mom Lisa, would you please stand? And now batter up, Hallett Kohick. Good evening, distinguished guests, Falcon friends, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Cadet 4th Class Hallett Kohick, ESOFA Class of 2017, and I'm a proud Pink Panther of Cadet Squadron 36. It was about four months ago, in fact, I think it was the day before in processing for BCT, when my parents and I crossed paths with General Kelly and he, as he was departing from Doolittle Hall. After a handshake and a few words, General Kelly wished me good luck at BCT and then casually said, by the way, Hallett, I have you scheduled to give a speech at our annual Falcon Foundation banquet this fall. So while you're at BCT, start thinking about what you want to say. <laughs> oh, and one more thing, you're going last, so be brief. <laughs> wow, I hadn't even started the academy yet. Heck, I was still worrying about the bus and the nice warm welcome from my new cadre. And now I already have my first homework assignment. Wow, thanks General Kelly. <laughs> so after getting through BCT, and now my first prog, here I am. And in that short period of time, I now realize the opportunity I have, and it's a great honor to be here tonight. Three years ago, I sat in my room staring at a letter, which I had just removed from what some of us now know as the thin white envelope. For those of you who have never received the thin white envelope, let me tell you a little about it. In the letter, it usually starts with the words, we regret to inform you. And it just keeps going downhill from there. <laughs> I can tell you the thought that I would one day be at the academy and given a speech to the Secretary of the Air Force, the Chief of Staff, our Superintendent, <clears throat> the Commandant, the Dean, and many other distinguished guests was not the first thought that was going through my head. <laughs> well, after that first thin white envelope and graduating from high school, I attended Greystone Preparatory School at Tri University in Kerrville, Texas. At, <clears throat> at the time, Greystone was only recognized by West Point and the Naval Academy for their sponsored candidates. I went through on my own, believing that this program would give me the best chance of securing an appointment. After a year of expert tutelage and mentoring from the Greystone staff, directed by, <coughs> sorry, directed by Commander David Bailey, a Naval Academy graduate himself, I reapplied to USAFA. But in the April of that year, I received my second thin white envelope. Very disappointed and although not thrilled about repeating the application process a third time, I still have my dream of graduating from this academy. So I made a decision to try a third time. Well, after a very tough week, the now even longer path to the academy was to be dramatically changed. That change and the answer to my prayers was an email from the Falcon Foundation offer me a Falcon Scholarship. In addition, and lucky for me, Greystone Preparatory School was added to the list of sponsored schools for the Air Force Academy. This allowed me to return to Greystone, and as the Executive Officer, I worked closely with Commander Bailey and his staff to oversee 42 Academy candidates. A year later, and the third time around, I finally received my appointment. So the United States Air Force Academy, <clears throat> sorry, simply put, the Falcon Foundation Scholarship has given me the opportunity to live my dream. I feel rather humbled speaking as if I've accomplished some great task when addressing this esteemed audience. As a dually, I hope this year is just a start to my many great things I wish to accomplish as an Air Force officer. 
And now, as I stand before you tonight, describing what the Falcon Scholarship means to me, there are several individuals I would like to talk about who share a similar characteristic. The first individual on the screen, if you can see it, <laughs> graduated from West Point in 1903. He was number one in his class of 95. Throughout his career, he accomplished many things, and his list of decorations is eye-watering. The Medal of Honor, three distinguished service crosses, and seven silver stars, just to name a few. That's pretty good for someone who tried three times to get into West Point. The next individual graduated from the Air Force Academy in 1965, and he was the first USAFA grad to receive the Medal of Honor. Most of you are familiar with his heroics, and his citation includes, while on a flight over North Vietnam, he ejected from his disabled aircraft and successfully evaded capture for more than six weeks. He was severely tortured. However, he did not divulge any information to his captors. During his intermediate periods of consciousness until his death, he never complained of, physical condition, of his physical condition, and on several occasions spoke of future escape attempts. He never gave up, and this is the same drive that got him into the academy, the same drive <clears throat> he demonstrated as a POW. This hero initially attended the Naval Prep School. The West Point graduate is General Douglas MacArthur, and the USAFA graduate, as you all may know, is Captain Lance Sai John. Among the audience tonight are three other individuals who have demonstrated a similar resolve, <clears throat> and all of these leaders have made a personal impact on my life and my road to the academy. One of them, as many of you already know, Lieutenant General Retired J.W. Kelly, class of 1964. Another familiar face, Lieutenant General Retired Michael Siegold, former superintendent of the United States Air Force Academy, class of 1976. And finally, General Robin Rand, the current commander of Air Education and Training Command, class of 1979. So what do these great leaders share in common with me, just a kid at fourth classman, other than the fact that we all look really good in uniform? <laughs> None of these well-known academy graduates were direct appointees in their respective academies, just like the Falcon recipients in the room. Looking back on their contributions to our country, one can only imagine our nation's loss if these tremendous military leaders had not displayed the never give up attitude it took to get into the academy. So one may ask, why does this even matter? What is the purpose of why we are here at the academy? I don't believe words alone can adequately express why we want to come to the academy or why we want to serve. But one thing is for sure, all of us want to contribute to something bigger than ourselves, to be part of the solution and make a difference. All of us would like to prevent what you now see on the screen from happening. But these tragic events do occur. And when they do, someone must step up. I'm sure General MacArthur and Captain Sai John felt like we do. That service to one's country is not an obligation but rather a great privilege. And now, because of the Falcon Foundation Scholarship, I have that opportunity to serve, just like they have. Thanks to the Falcon Foundation, there is no more dwelling on that thin white envelope. Now I can push the envelope. In closing, I'd like to thank the Falcon Foundation for giving me the opportunity to attend the United States Air Force Academy and to serve my country. I look forward to joining all of you on active duty in the future. And probably the most important thing of my presentation, go Air Force, beat Army. <laughs>